Hey, what's up? Uh, this is Legendary Beats. If you don't know who I am already, from legendarybeatsonline.com and this YouTube page, Legendary Promo TV. Um, yeah, I'm gonna be starting, start doing like daily vlogs or I don't know, maybe it might be weekly vlogs. <clears throat> All depends on <laughs> if if I have the time to upload it or whatnot. Um, it wouldn't probably be edited or anything because I guess vlogs don't really need to be edited um yeah so it was suggested that I should start doing this um and I know it helped me uh, present myself a bit better um get a more better feel on what you guys are interested in based on your feedback um also uh let you guys know that I'm here because I haven't been uploading a lot of videos recently due to life changes uh, work and family and things like that um, and it's it, not that it gets in the way it just there's different priorities now in life um, but yeah I also do music so this is a very important part for me to also stay in connection with you guys so you guys that know that I'm here that I still provide the same services that I have in the, in the past um, so I guess for this first vlog video I guess I'll talk about you know why or how I started um, music um, for a few minutes I'll talk about that I don't want to bore you too much I'll probably get better at this as <laughs> I do more yeah so I started in around 2004 between 2004 2007 um, as a young child my parents had us uh, my brothers and I um, take music lessons piano guitar bass um, and it stuck for a while. Um, I had a problem with theory and reading music. I really hated the process of being stuck or put in a box to just have to read the music. I really hated the process of that. And so I started composing my own classical music. Um, as a child, we listened to mostly classical and religious radio stations. Uh, that's what our parents raised us on. Um, and I started to uh, uh, literally write classical songs or actually record classical songs um, on the computer or however I was able to get it. I also had a program that actually, as I played, was able to write out the notes and actually do the notation for me. And that's kind of how I started with producing. In a way, I was looking for a way to make my music digital before I even knew about FL Studio and all of that. So around 2004, 2007, between that time frame, there was uh, one of the upperclassmen. I went to a private school where the upperclassmen and lowerclassmen kind of mixed a bit. Um, so the classes may have uh, two grades uh, in it. So the age range may be a bit different um, or it may be like some younger and some older in the same class. It was a smaller school. Uh, one of the upperclassmen had uh, brought a tape or CD at the time, I'm not too sure. I think it was a CD. And he was playing his instrumentals. And of course, this is the first time that I'm hearing about instrumentals uh, and that he produced it. At the time, I didn't understand, I didn't know the word producing. Um, so what we all knew was that, oh, you know, he made these instrumentals or he made these beats. And I was like, wow, that's exactly what I want to do. That is exactly what I want to be able to do is take my sounds, my ideas, and make it digital to, or make it to the point where I can distribute it or I can listen to it, replay it. Um, I never really thought of being able to sell it. That came a bit later. But being able to take my music and my um, uh, what I create and actually have it on a disc or on the computer was amazing to me. I loved computers at the time. At the time, I I was able to, I, I, when MySpace was around, I was doing like those MySpace backgrounds and stuff like that. And I used to sell MySpace backgrounds and MySpace graphics. And at the time, everyone was hyped up about that. That's what everyone wanted. And that's what I got into because I was decent with computers. I knew a bit of HTML. I was going to school for, or this is before I was going to school for IT, but while I was uh, in high school, I was learning about 
um, on my own learning about uh, website design and stuff like that. So I knew a little bit of HTML and I started doing graphics with, uh, what did I use? I don't think GIMP was around and I, I don't know if I use uh, Photoshop. I don't know if I downloaded it some, from somewhere. I don't know. Uh, but I used some photo editor to make, I could tell you, terrible MySpace backgrounds and graphics. But people bought it, bought it, you know, and at the time it was hot. So I was interested in computers and I wanted to be able to build, put, connect the platform between music and computers. All I know, like I knew a lot about music. I was, I was being taught music. I was going for lessons and things like that. My parents always had us perform for family and it was in our blood. It was in my mind. It was part of me. So 2004, 2007, I heard uh, the tape or CD of, of, my, of one of the upperclassmen. I was like, that's exactly what I want, I want to do. I found out how he did it. Um, I asked him what was his software. I found that information out and it, it was FL Studio. Um, and of, I was able to get, uh, well, I was able to acquire or I was able to get FL Studio and uh, I, through the guidance of the upperclassmen and some of my friends, they would tell me, give me feedback on different things. I would mess with it, how to do things, learn. And I started spending hours upon hours just making instrumentals. And I, I like listened to some of them back then. I could, I really do like the creative idea of what I was good looking for. Uh, but my sound choice was terrible. Um, some of the instrumentals actually sounded really bad. The mix wasn't there, uh, but it was still amazing that I was able to do that at that time. And uh, or near 2010, I actually sold uh, a tape, a CD, a beat tape. It's called a beat tape. It was on a CD, right? A 10 or so beats on someone who I found on Reverb Nation. And so met him at a McDonald's out in Long Island. Sorry, I have a cold. And uh, and sold him the tape for like a hundred dollars. And that's when I knew I was like, I could really do this. And um, so between two thousand four two thousand seven is when I started producing uh, instrumentals and uh, learned as much as I can. Um, near two thousand and ten, I started getting online. Uh, that's when SoundClick and everything was hyped. Um, SoundCloud, not too much. It was more SoundClick. So I would buy, invest money wherever I got money from, mostly from music, amazingly. Um, and uh, buy layouts for the SoundClick page. I would do my own graphics sometimes. I even would, I think at the beginning, I had made my own layouts. Uh, but of course, Looking at all these bigger guys on SoundClick at the time, you know, your stuff has to be professional. It has to look nice. So I, and any money that I would get, I would save up and spend on it. And as the years progressed, uh, I learned more. I used to be part of the group of spamming everybody in their message in their message box. I used to spam everyone on Reverb Nation. I used to spam everyone on Facebook when it started, everyone on MySpace. And at that time, marketing was all about reaching as many people as possible with your link with the possibility that they will click it as the years progress recently now uh, that is now considered as what we call spamming because of the fact that these individuals are not looking or not requesting that information from you directly so you to force a link upon them is deemed you know uh, you know wrong and it, it makes perfect sense it is you sh that's not something that you should do. It's like me um, coming up to you and forcing my mixtape on you, but you're not even interested in rap music. Why would I do that? Or why would you accept it? Or why would you even want to pay? So it's always important to build a relationship or come to the point where you can ask first and let the person make the decision and then proceed with offering whatever it is that uh, you asked about. So, yeah, so I learned a lot of that stuff as the years passed. Um, coming on to recent years, um, uh, of course, uh, things got a bit better. I, I had a, sm a very small clientele, but very faithful clientele. Um, 
I, I would sell like exclusives for a hundred. Um, sometimes, um, depending on the client, five hundred, and the price varies depending on the project and the size and who it is that I'm working with. And it was amazing to be able to produce something that some that helped someone else make something amazing or legendary. Um, and and that comes down to the idea of the name Legendary Beats. I think when I was on SoundCloud, I think I, I had the name Legendary Music. I think I actually started off as DJ Legendary, I think. Something like that. And, you know, uh, I, I, I was led to change the name to Legendary Beats, and that's what stuck. And... Um, I think the reason why I chose that is because uh, I am promoting the idea that to be able to create something based on what your passion is and what you love and be able to impact or have an impact on other individuals who are in a similar, who have a similar understanding as you or in that realm that you're in, in whatever genre of music or whatever it may be, and that they can understand what where you're coming from and that you can influence them to do even better, to become legendary, to be remembered um, or to be thought about uh, whatever they're uploading, whatever they're providing. And that's what I kind of built. And um, I built a relationship with a lot of my clients. Um, the amazing thing about the internet is that I was able to actually build a relationship without even meeting these people um, in person. So, and I was big on, I had worked in sales for about two to three years. And the experience that I pulled from that is that no matter um, who you meet at the cashier, at the register, when you're at the register and you're the cashier, no matter who it is that you're meeting, you're told from your boss that you have to present, you have to present them with a smile, you have to ask them how's their day going, and then you proceed with checking out. So you kind of build a conversation. It's always a simple question of how you're doing to kind of break the ice. No matter if it's someone who comes all the time, it doesn't matter. When they're seeing you, it's their first interaction with you at that time, at that moment. So it doesn't matter what day it is or whatever, that question is something simply, simple enough that anyone would ask anyone when they meet them. So I realized that no matter who it is that you're meeting, sometimes your positive influence would change what they were feeling probably prior to you actually, uh, to them coming to you at that register. They may have had the worst day or they may have just got fired or something bad may have happened, but because you uh, reached out to them or spoke to them, um, in a positive way with a smile that they may be influenced by that and may change and feel happy at the end of that transaction between you and the individual. So I portray that in however I, I talk to an individual, even if it's online or even if it's in person, I always give that respect. I built that, uh, that was implanted in me from my parents, from my upbringing. I'm from the private school that I went to to respect your elders, respect others. Um, but I chose to continually do that because it also walks in, it also works perfectly well in business. And I started to realize that as the years progressed, um, as I started doing this online side gig, this hustle, if you will, um, of selling instrumentals online to individuals that I've never seen before, but because they enjoyed my product and more or less they enjoyed the individual selling the product, which was myself, they would continually come back to me to purchase. Yes, there's a bunch of producers out there. Even back in 2011, there's a bunch of producers out there who most likely or did have better instrumentals than I did. But because I was able to reach out to someone we developed a relationship. Um, they trusted in me because of how I was able to portray myself to them. And they put more trust in my product, more trust in my services. And that's kind of what I built it on. So, so the re that kind of pushed me 
to never stop. So there were a few times um, in 2000, between 2010, 2012, I felt like um, just forgetting about all this. There's a time frame where uh, uh, it was very slow for me, like for selling music and stuff like that. It really hurt. That was a time frame where I think everything started to flip. I would say between 2010 to 2014, people started picking up that you can't spam everybody. Uh, it was harder to sell instrumentals online. There's a lot of competition building up. Everyone was getting FL Studio. Everyone was learning um, and growing. Uh, so uh, the market became a bit saturated, if you will, of producers. Um, so producers had to learn how to switch it up and you had to start building the relationships in order for things to work. And that's what I learned. And I started to evolve around that and started to implement those changes that I needed um, in order to push my music or my brand forward. So I started to learn. I started to uh, upload uh, YouTube videos. I started to um, reach out more to other people um, in a way that's more natural. Uh, yes, I did invest money in automation and softwares and 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 how to sell beats like a pro stuff like that i learned some things mostly this it's stuff that you actually um subconsciously already know <laughs> but for some reason you got to hear it from another individual who you think that's more successful and then when you actually view the content you're like ah man i just spent that money on something that i already know I kind of just wasted time there. And so what I'm trying to say, there's no secret. There's no like um, special uh, uncoded way of doing things. There's a blueprint. The blueprint is uh, that you, you have a product, your music, your beats, whatever it may be. Um, you make that to the best of your ability. Uh, you reach out to individuals who may be interested in that type of product, which would be like your traffic, your audience, your fans. With that information, you continually build relationship with those individuals so that they may continue to see you as relevant. Um, that your relationship with them may want them to continue to do business with you. Um, for me, I had artists tell me that because they liked who I was personally, that that's why they want to do business with me because if they had a problem with um, buying instruments or if they had a problem with selling, um, not selling, but if they wanted to make changes, something I would make changes for them. I would work with them on pricing. Uh, all of this is part of sales and marketing. Um, I'm not saying to lowball yourself. I'm saying you have to start from somewhere. And as you get better and better, you're you got to realize artists will pay money for the service that you provide and there's going to be a time where you may have to when you may grow bigger than that lower low quality clientele low quality in the sense of price and um, value as the years progress or as time progresses and changes you should be getting better which i realized i i did start getting better and i started raising my price um, recently, what I did was I jumped on other sites like Fiverr.com or Fiverr.com, however you want to say it, um, where for Fiverr, um, once you have a good reputation, the site kind of promotes your gig for you and you will get clients uh, based on or you have inquiries about your service. Um, they kind of do like a small boost for you once you get good feedback and things like that over a certain period of time. And that helped me to test some things. So what I did was I raised my price by a hundred dollars, two hundred dollars, um, and I realized that people will pay money for things that they need. So, and the thing is that it's not only artists. There's a bunch of other people who also use instrumentals. Uh, I knew this from way before, but producers get into the mindset. It's easy to get into the mindset that only artists want instrumentals. But that's that's not true. You have people who do radio radio stations. You have people who are doing. I did a uh, instrumental for a woman who is creating 
children's song books or children children's songs for a book or something that she was doing or a CD that she was making. So um, there's individuals who are looking for music in general or instrumental backing music, backing tracks for what their project is. And it's your responsibility to find these individuals because they do need you. Um, of course, if your quality is not there or whatnot, you can build up to that. They can even try something out with you. Um, and that's the stuff that, uh, that makes it um, so neat and cool because even now, I'm still growing and learning and I'm realizing that more and more that, you know, my music isn't only subject to just artists. It's not just subject to one area. Of course, on my website, I'll sell instrumentals to artists. That's where that's for. But there's other platforms where I can sell my service to someone else for for a different type of uh, genre or a different type of topic of choice. Um, so it's amazing to be able to do that where your talent can be spread amongst a, a, a wide range of things. But of course, you don't want to get too wide where you get, you know, kind of flooded. But um, it's amazing that you're able to do that with something that you started when you were a kid, that you had a feeling for that was that's in your heart, that you feel that's in your, that's part of your blood, that's in your mind. Um, and it's pretty cool to be able to do that. And I would say that if you are an artist, if you are a producer and you're starting off, you know, I was terrible. I wish... I could find the CD that I had of the instrumentals that I had on that B tape that I saw. It was so bad. Like I'm listening. I was listening to it before I left New York, um, uh, not too long, two years ago. And it was so bad, but it sold. You know. So no matter how bad you think you are, there's someone who may think that that what you're selling or what the music is or what the instrumental is, they may think that's the best thing. It may work for them. But that doesn't mean that you should stay at that point. That doesn't mean that you should try to exceed or be better. That should just mean that you should know that your your type of service or product is validated in the sense that someone is willing to purchase or pay money for it. And that's how you're able to validate these things. So everything in life, uh, if you have different plans on what you want to do or whatever it is, you need to validate it. Um, of course, you have to invest time and effort before you get to that point. But I realized early on, or I found out early on, that it was I was able to validate what I wanted to do. The only reason why I actually pushed from 2004 up until now, um, um, more and more my music or to continually keep it alive or continue to offer the services because I was able to validate it because I can make a couple hundred dollars a month off of music without really trying because if because I can if I wanted to make more music push harder and make near a thousand dollars in music every month possibly you know like it's a service that people actually want and you should see that too with your music if you're an artist, of course, there's going to be different ways of promoting. There's going to be different ways of getting your music out there. But if you don't try, you wouldn't know. Um, so you got to keep pushing. And um, that's I, this is the first time that I'm actually expressing something, uh, exp expressing this in such a long video or in one video. Um, and I'm glad that I'm able to, able to do this because it continually reminds myself of why I started and why I want to do this. Um, it's an amazing feeling to, as I said before, to create something and have people appreciate it and for them to use it to make something better. And then to be able also to um, help support your family and your, and your loved ones with money that you make off of something that you love. Of course, you could have a, a job. I have a nine. I have a nine to five. I'm a manager, um, and it's tough at times. Work is work. You have to work. Um, that's security. Uh, you need that. And um, I'm not, and I don't think I will be at a point where I will um, leave that nine to five or leave that job, leave that man manager position. Say I'm gonna do music 100 percent because at this point in time, life has changed for me. I got married. There's a ba I have a baby on the way, um, and unfortunately, 
for myself, I can't see that music will be able to support that, support my family 100% on just doing music. And I love what I do as a manager as well. You know, it's, um, uh, I went to school for business administration in IT, and I'm actually in a position where I'm able to use those skills, and I love it, and it's amazing. So I'm able to use what I learned or what I, from music as well as from business, from schooling, from my experiences, use it in my 9 to 5 and also use it in my music. And it's amazing. And I'm able to do it both. Do something that's, um, do what I love and implement what I've learned in my quote unquote side hustle. And then also in my 9 to 5 in the security uh, job that I have, in the job that I need (laughs) to support my family I'm able to apply those things as well so no matter what you're trying to do it's very important that you validate it now if it's taking you like actually I would say this if you still live in your parents household um, which is very which is a very vital um, important step for myself during those early years if you still live in your parents household then they will support anything that you're interested in financially or support you, um, uh, you know, support what you're doing. Um, I would say take advantage of that in a sense that, okay, if you want to be an artist, okay, you're going to need a few things. You're going to need a computer. You're going to need a mic. You're going to need audio software, recording software, simple stuff. First three things you're going to need as you get better and better. As you start validating that type of um, uh, that type of service, make some money or whatever it is or or whatever it is, then you could grow from there. But sh- I would say use that time when you're there with your in, living with your parents in the basement or in a in your room, whatever, and see if that actually works. See if it's something that can actually work. You can always sell back those items. You can always make money back on those items by selling it or getting rid of it. Um, But at least you're able to use that time while you're at your parents' place. You have no bills. Uh, You don't have to worry about any financial issues or financial things. That's the best time to try things out. Um, I, I was blessed to have parents who were supportive in what I was doing. They knew that their children liked music. Um, they knew that we were talented in different ways. They encouraged us to do what we enjoyed and what we were talented in, and they pushed us. And especially when we were able to validate it financially, they they encouraged us to continue pushing it because in this world, this day and age, there's a lot of youth who do not have skills. They don't have skills to be able to support themselves. They don't have skills to be able to leave the household and be able to live on their own in the sense of surviving in the real world, in a sense of having um, those uh, certain attributes to know that they have a skill that they can use either for themselves, work for themselves, or to use them at a job where they can help their boss do better or to be an attribute to any place that they go. It's unfortunate. So, this is why I'm here. This is why I, I'm Legendary Beats. This is why um, I have LegendaryBeatsOnline.com, Legendary Promo TV. This is why I do this. This is to support my family. This is to support my passion. This is to support the concept that if you create something and you can, you can validate it and you can get it out there to help support your family, to help support others, to help build to help others make something amazing, to make something legendary, that's an amazing feeling. That's an accomplishment. And I think I will continue to do this if God allows me. Um, of course, it will be on the side. It wasn't, wouldn't be on a bigger platform as I would have liked to years ago. Um, but I will continue doing it because it's a talent that, that helps me. It helps me in various ways. Um, being on video like this actually helps me... Um, be more personable, be able to present myself, uh, be more uh, uh, to be able to use my words to express myself better. Um, And it helps me grow even with the music um, to be able to take time out to actually 
do the boring stuff. My um, my brother Philip Warren Photography. Yeah, you could check him out on Facebook and YouTube. He put up a video in a sense of uh, the boring. What can people consider boring is actually what helps you get to the next level. So for me as a producer, I had to learn how to mix. I had to learn how to master. I had to learn sound selection. I had to learn sound design. I had to figure that stuff out on my own um, in order to get to the level where I am, to be able to stay validated, to be able to continue making money on a product that I'm able to make better and better each time I make something. And those boring things are the things that's going to help you push. So the time that you have now, um, invest that time to do those boring things so that when you are able to actually do what you want to do, you can implement what you've learned, those boring things that you've learned. Because those boring things are going to actually make you way better than than you can imagine. So yeah, so... Um, I'll, I'll try to keep push um, doing more of vlogs like this. Um, actually, doing this just now feels very healthy, um, and I'm getting a call in. Uh, but yeah, thanks so much for checking this out, and hope to see you in the next one. Again, this is Legendary Beats from LegendaryBeatsOnline.com. I'm out. Peace.